Thank you again for tuning in and watching or listening to this video. I appreciate you uh, doing that. Uh, I want to say that we are continuing to pray for everyone, especially those in our church family, but also for all the others who have in any way been affected by this coronavirus. Uh, I also want to say it's not over yet. A lot of people are acting as if it is, but it's not, and I'm praying that if it's God's will, it won't spike again because of everyone not taking the necessary precautions. I also want to say that if you're watching this video, we will begin meeting here on a limited basis and under uh, several precautionary guidelines, which I will be calling everyone in the church and explaining all that, uh, on Father's Day, which is three weeks from today. So on Father's Day, three weeks from today, we will have our Sunday school at 1015 and our morning worship service at 11 o'clock. We will not be having any evening services uh, for now, but we will begin back with Sunday school and morning worship, Lord willing, on Father's Day, June the 21st. And so uh, I wanted to make that announcement first off before I forgot that. We have been studying, this is our Sunday school recording, so we have been studying the book of Nehemiah, and I just want to make a couple of comments, and then we are going to listen to the reading of Nehemiah chapter 11. Once again, there are a whole lot of names in chapter 11 because the whole chapter is about the people who were going to be the residents of Jerusalem. And we'll uh, talk more about that after we listen to the recording. But I wanted to mention to you that remember that Nehemiah was a governor. He was not a priest. Uh, he had been the cupbearer to the king, and he was a governor of Judah. And so he was more of a political leader, so to speak, and he worked with the spiritual leaders very closely in all the reforms that God was able to do through him. And when we allow God to work through us, mighty things can be done. Don't ever underestimate what one person can do if they will surrender their life to the Lord and allow God to work through them. So I wanted to mention that before we listen to this chapter. So at this time, we're going to go ahead and listen to Nehemiah chapter 11. We're going to listen to the entire chapter of 36 verses. And then I want to come back and just make a few comments on it after we listen to it. So let's listen to Nehemiah chapter 11. Now the leaders of the people lived in Jerusalem, and the rest of the people cast lots to bring one out of ten to live in Jerusalem, the holy city, while nine out of ten remained in the other towns. And the people blessed all the men who willingly offered to live in Jerusalem. These are the chiefs of the province who lived in Jerusalem, but in the towns of Judah everyone lived on his property in their towns. Israel, the priests, the Levites, the temple servants, and the descendants of Solomon's servants. And in Jerusalem lived certain of the sons of Judah and of the sons of Benjamin. Of the sons of Judah, Athaiah the son of Uzziah, son of Zechariah, son of Amariah, son of Shephatiah, son of Mahalalel, of the sons of Perez. And Maaseah the son of Barak, son of Colhosa, son of Hazael, son of Adaiah, son of Joyarib, son of Zechariah, son of the Shilonite. All the sons of Perez who lived in Jerusalem were 468 valiant men. And these are the sons of Benjamin, Salu the son of Meshullam, son of Joed, son of Tadeah, son of Koleah, son of Maaseah, son of Ithiel, son of Jesheah, and his brothers, men of valor, 928. Joel the son of Zichri was their overseer, and Judah the son of Hasanua was second over the city. Of the priests, Judea the son of Joyarib, Jacob, Sareah the son of Hilkiah, son of Meshullam, son of Zadok, son of Mereoth, son of Ahitub, ruler of the house of God, and their brothers who did the work of the house, 822, and Adaiah the son of Jeroam, son of Pelaliah, son of Amzai, son of Zechariah, son of Pasher, son of Malkijah, and his brothers, heads of father's houses, 242. And Amashtai, the son of Azarel, son of Azai, son of Meshulamoth, 
son of Immer, and their brothers, mighty men of valor, 128. Their overseer was Zabdiel, the son of Hagadolam. And of the Levites, Shemaiah, the son of Hashab, son of Azrikam, son of Hashabiah, son of Bunai. And Shabbatai and Josabad, of the chiefs of the Levites, who were over the outside work of the house of God. And Madaniah, the son of Micah, son of Zabdi, son of Asaph, who was the leader of the praise, who gave thanks. And Bakbukiah, the second among his brothers, and Abda, the son of Shemua, son of Galal, son of Jeduthun. All the Levites in the holy city were 284. The gatekeepers, Akab, Talmon, and their brothers, who kept watch at the gates, were 172. And the rest of Israel and of the priests and the Levites were in all the towns of Judah, everyone in his inheritance. But the temple servants lived on Ophel, and Ziha and Gishba were over the temple servants. The overseer of the Levites in Jerusalem was Uzziah the son of Bani, son of Hashabiah, son of Madaniah, son of Micah, of the sons of Asaph, the singers, over the work of the house of God. For there was a command from the king concerning them, and a fixed provision for the singers, as every day required. And Pethahiah the son of Meshezabel, of the sons of Zerah, the son of Judah, was at the king's side in all matters concerning the people. And as for the villages with their fields, some of the people of Judah lived in Kiriath Arba and its villages, and in Dibon and its villages, and in Jechamziel and its villages, and in Jeshua, and in Molada, and Beth Pilat, and Hazershual, in Beersheba and its villages, in Ziklag, in Makona and its villages, in Enrema, in Zora, in Jarmuth, Zenoa, Adullam and their villages, Lachish and its fields, and Ezekah and its villages. So they encamped from Beersheba to the valley of Hinnom. The people of Benjamin also lived from Geba onward, at Michmash, Ijah, Bethel and its villages, Anathoth, Nab, Ananiah, Hazor, Ramah, Geteum, Hadid, Zeboim, Nebalat, Lod, and Onam, the valley of craftsmen. And certain divisions of the Levites in Judah were assigned to Benjamin. Okay, we have listened to Nehemiah chapter 11, and uh, once again, this is May the 31st, 2020 at Riverside Baptist Church, and this is our Sunday School recording. We've been studying the book of Nehemiah, and also, once again, reminder that three weeks from today, which will be June the 21st, Father's Day, we'll, we will begin meeting at, uh, Sunday school at 10.15 and morning worship at 11 o'clock uh, under some guidelines, which I'll be calling all the people in the church that normally come and explaining those guidelines. Uh, we'll try to keep our social dis distancing, I can't hardly say that, and, uh, and other precautions. So I'll be uh, getting in contact with all the people of the church about that. But in chapter 11 of the book of Nehemiah, we see the people who dwell in Jerusalem and those that dwell in the other Judean cities uh, round about. And the first thing we notice here in the beginning of the chapter is that God instructed the leaders of the people, Nehemiah, the governor, and the other spiritual leaders of the people to uh, populate Jerusalem. At this point in time, Jerusalem even though it was not as big as it had been before, it was not very populated. So one-tenth, 10% of the people that lived in the surrounding cities were going to have to move from where they were and to go and live in Jerusalem. And it apparently seems like not everybody wanted to do that. It would mean if you had a business outside of the city, you would have to relocate it inside the city. If you lived outside the city, you would have to move all your stuff to the inside of the city. And so they cast lots to determine who the 10% would be. But those who willingly volunteered to go without having to be told that you're one of the 10% that needs to go, they were praised and blessed by the people in verse 2. I also wanted to point out to you several things along the way that you may have missed. Uh, we learn in this chapter in verse 9 that Joel, 
the son of Zikri, was their overseer, and Judah, the son of Shenua, was second over the city. So we learn not only uh, just a bunch of names, but people who were in positions of leadership as well. Also, another thing you'll notice if you were listening closely or if you read this on your own, which I encourage you not only to uh, have this one reading, but also to read it carefully and prayerfully on your own, you'll notice several places where it talks about people of strength, or in King James in verse 14, mighty men of valor. So it talks about the fact that we see here the city of Jerusalem would need to be protected. Remember all the opposition that Nehemiah had gotten while he was trying to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. So after everything's been rebuilt and people moved in, they needed people who could defend the city. So all of these references to mighty men of value, men of strength, men who could stand, all of these references are talking about people who probably were in the military, people who had training on defending the city. And then as we move along through the chapter, we also see an emphasis on those who would be able to uh, praise God uh, through prayer and thanksgiving in verse 17 to begin the thanksgiving and prayer, and also special accommodations, not only to the people who worked in the temple as the priest, but also those who worked as singers. In verse 22 and 23, we learn of the sons of Asaph, and all, all of Asaph and his descendants were known as being singers and people who were skilled in playing musical instruments. That is why the great hymn book of the Hebrews, which is the book of Psalms, which has 150 chapters. Many of those chapters are written by Asaph or some of his children. Uh, the, of the sons of Asaph, the singers were over the business of the house of God. And in verse 23 tells us, for it was the king's commandment concerning them that a certain portion should be for the singers due for every day. So God made sure that the people who worked in the temple as singers as well as the others were taken care of and uh, that they too were, uh, since they were given most of their time to writing music and leading singing, they were to be taken care of as well through the offerings that were received. And so we see in this chapter those that returned to Jerusalem, and when we get to chapter 12, which we'll look at in our next returning, it's a lot of names in that one as well, so I'll probably do like I did on this one. And uh, we see the people in chapter 12, it's the return of the priests and Levites with Zerubbabel, and the dedication of the wall and the appointment of temple duties. And then when we get to the final chapter, which is Nehemiah chapter 13, Nehemiah is going to lead the people in various reforms. And so as I mentioned, Nehemiah was used by God to bring about many reforms. And he was, as I mentioned earlier, he was not a priest. He had been the cupbearer to a king who had become governor of this area. And so in Nehemiah chapter 8, a few weeks ago, we saw the reading of God's word and how important it was in causing the people to realize that they had sinned and they fallen short of God's purpose for them, and there it led them to repentance. And then we see the people's confession of their sin and repentance and worship and listening to the Word of God in chapter 9, which we saw a couple of weeks ago. And then last week, the, all the people who signed the covenant, and uh, we did not have a video for that, but we did have the audio. We had some technical difficulties, so... There is an audio of that, but not a video. And then today, the list of the leaders who are going to populate Jerusalem. Next week, chapter 12, the Levites dedicate the temple. And then finally, chapter 13, the Levites are going to serve in the temple. And so we'll be seeing more of that as we move through the rest of this book. Now, after we finish this book, we're going to move into the book of Esther. And the first thing I want to mention is instead of having 13 chapters like Nehemiah, Esther only has 10. And Esther has about one-third as many verses 
as are in the book of Nehemiah, and about half the number of words. And so Esther's going to be a shorter book, and we'll be able to move through it probably a little bit faster than we did the book of Nehemiah. Uh, we're not going to have nearly as many names in the book of Esther as we had in the book of Nehemiah. And so these are interesting books, and in in they're very important books. They are books of history, uh, we call them. And uh, when we finish studying the books of history, then we may go on to the major prophets or we might back up to the other history books that we have not studied yet. Or we may go to the books of poetry, which there are five of those, but we'll, I'll let you know. Uh, I want to close this recording with prayer as we've been doing. And uh, I pray that God will keep all of you safe and that you will be wise and do what you the Lord has told you and spoken to your heart to do. Let's have prayer together. Father God, in the name of Jesus, your blessed Son, we do come before you. Father, we thank you for all of your word. We thank you for this wonderful book of Nehemiah and our ability to study it and the lessons that we learn from this book that can be applied to our hearts and lives today. And Father, one thing we continue to learn in your word is that one person can make a big difference when that one person is surrendered to you. And whether that person is uh, what we would call the laity or whether that person is a leader in the church doesn't matter as long as that person will turn and surrender their life to you and allow you to work through them, Lord, that many reforms can happen because of one person and their leadership. Father God, I do pray for all of our church members, especially in their families. I pray for all the ones out there, Lord, who have lost loved ones to this coronavirus and to, for any other reason, Lord, during this time period, these last few months. And I pray, Lord, that you will give them that peace that passeth all understanding that only you can do in a time of crisis. Father, I pray that as we move forward in this church and as we are preparing to open on a limited basis on uh, June the 21st, Father's Day, I pray that you will guide us and lead us as we begin our Sunday school back and our morning worship, Lord, that we would uh, take precautions that are necessary. And I thank you for the opportunity to be able to come back together. And I just pray, Lord, that uh, this virus will not spike again uh, and not get out of hand even more than it's been because of so many people, Lord, not listening to precautions that they should have been taking. And Father God, thank you again for your precious word. We pray all these things in your holy name. Amen.